last day of, the, of, of sessions. I appreciate you coming here. Last session doesn't mean I won't keep it short. We'll, short. we'll make sure that we use 45 minutes at least. And then we'll open up the session for audience questions. We have got an amazing panel today. Uh, I'd like to invite my panel, so let's start with my my clan. You, sir. Uh, Holly Ross, can you please step on the stage, please? And Adia Jam. You say it? So, uh, the impact is India's journey from consumption to contribution, culture, and the road ahead. This is going to be a panel session, as you've already seen. Uh, let me introduce myself. I am Piyush Podar. I am Director of Professional Services at Accelerant. I've been uh, living in Drupal since 2008, and uh, I've been giving some talks on uh, this topic, which is India's journey from uh, consumption to contribution. For most of those talks, you know, they were talks in London, Super Camp London, Bangalore, Jaipur, etc. Most of those talks were about the internal perspective of what we are doing, our, our credentials, our validations. Uh, I took the opportunity of this to go in Asia to get an external validation on this whole thing and a uh, opinion from a global perspective as to where we are, how does the world think we are doing good, not good, what are the challenges that we need to face, and what can we really learn from experiences anecdotes of our amazing panel up here and I'm hoping to have some great takeaways for all of us as, as part of the Indian community. Rubicon Asia has been a great milestone. We're going to need a good few such similar milestones going forward as well. So I welcome you once again. Uh, I'll be your moderator and uh, I'd like to uh, the panelists to please introduce themselves although they don't need any instructions really. But yeah, my can please. Is this working? Cool. So I'm Mike Lamb. I work for, work for Pfizer. Uh, Pfizer standardized on Drupal about four years ago. Um, actually, it's pretty much exactly four years ago to the, to the day now. And um, over that time, we built, I think it's close to a thousand websites on, on Drupal. Um, when, we, when we first started and selected Drupal, we had about, I think it was eight people in India, working with us in India. And that's grown to, to close to 200 people now. So we've worked extensively with people uh, with teams in India to, to, build our, to, to build our Drupal sites. It's kind of weird being back in this room. I was here, literally here for the camp last year, which was, which was also fantastic. So it's a bit strange being, uh, being back here. And I'm not Megan Sanicki, but I speak for her today, much to her chagrin. <laughs> uh, I'm Holly Ross. I'm the executive director of the Drupal Association. And uh, I'm excited about this part of the conversation at the association in particular right now. We're trying to think about what are the metrics that are indicators of the health of the Drupal project and contribution is at the heart of that. And we're really trying to understand the full broad spectrum of contribution from code to documentation to camps and all the ways that you can volunteer and support the, the Drupal community. So I know we'll learn a lot from this that we can apply in our work. Awesome. Yeah. I'm Jen. I'm Jen. Hi. Hi, I'm Jen. Uh, I've been working with Drupal since 2005, which means it's a remarkably long slice of my life at this point. And I was a very early employee at Acquia. I have the privilege now to be in developer relations at Acquia as the evangelist. And so my job is actually to try and figure out ways to make your day as developers better. And I been really, really heavily involved in the community, and it's, it's been an incredible pleasure to watch uh, the Indian community grow and flourish and become uh, really, really important contributors. I have also been quite intensely involved at the intersection between uh, Drupal and business in many, many ways, and especially Drupal and government, so I've spoken at a bunch of government events in the last few years, keynoted some of them, and, and talked with people uh, in that space, and um, I've got some fairly strong opinions about uh, how open source and Drupal can uh, help us defend and sustain our local economies, and um, that's what I think, that's sort of my, the main message I want to get out 
during this today. Uh, Let me start some questions. Let's, let's try to understand um, the audience, you know, uh, uh, so that we can ask the right questions and we can answer appropriately and more relevant. So, can we have a show of hands uh, to see how many of you are community members? You know, you may have contributed code, you may have uh, participated in an event organized or whatever. All right. Almost more than half of that. How many are new to Drupal? You know, trying to check out Drupal for the first time. Awesome. Welcome, good gentlemen. Um, and how many of you have been contributors? Members are fine, but contributors who have actually contributed at least one patch, helped at least one event organized, or stuff like that. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, we have a set of questions that we'll be uh, uh, asking and, and talking about. Are there any expectations, any specific goals, any, any challenges you guys are looking for so that we can direct our conversations towards that? We, we definitely would have an audience question section after the list of questions are done. Anyway, any, 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 anybody? All right. Community, right. and I think yeah. Professor Fatak here uh, always says that you know India is a country of you know downloaders, and you know there's not enough upload happening. So, any suggestions on that? You know, okay. I'd be very happy to take that away. Okay, yeah, great. I mean, yeah, that's that's the whole idea, right? Consumption to contribution. So you know, uploading before you know, downloading to uploading, really. So uh, yeah, thanks for the beginning. Let's start with a very uh, very fundamental question, uh, kind of broad. And you know, perhaps going to answer your as well. Uh, and this is the panel. What's your impression of the Indian Drupal community when compared to the global perspective, when compared to the global Drupal community out there? How do you, you know, where do you see us? What do you actually feel about us, right? You know, we are part of the community, but how much? Mike, please, can you start? Sure. So, um, yeah. I I hadn't seen these questions, so I'm just, just thinking through it, through it at a moment. So um, I, I would say it's still, it's still early days, but it's growing extremely, extremely rapidly, and there's a massive, massive amount of opportunity here. So uh, we've learned a lot of, and hopefully we can share a lot of our learnings over the last few years, years here, here today. So the impression is that there's, there's a huge amount of opportunity, there's a huge amount of talent here um, already working in Drupal. So um, I guess the discussion is going to be about how we can capitalize on that and, uh, and then, then, then use that to. to Make the rest of this opportunity. Okay. And this is going to open your know, open panel, so anybody can, you know.
I'm going to get other questions now for one second. So, so I, I know a lot of the communities around the globe pretty well, and I'm incredibly excited to get to know the Indian community. And my first impressions are there's more energy here than almost anywhere else, more younger developers, and incredible outreach into schools and universities. And I was talking with a guy today who's organized a program so students learn Drupal while they're studying and come, come straight out of the jobs. Um, all of this is missing, frankly, in Europe. And it's young, and it's exciting, and it's energetic, and I um, <clears throat> would very, very much like to come out here and, and be a part of this as often as I can. So I'm, um, I think that the Indian community has a lot to teach for the rest of us at this point, to be perfectly honest. Wow, great. Yeah, Avi, Hussain. <coughs> Uh, Jamila is coming back, right? you know, I think uh, from what I've seen, we have, uh, we've been able to uh, get into schools, colleges, universities much better than uh, what limited experience I have from other countries. Uh, and uh, I, I think we have, I mean, not, we're, we're not really talking about contributions over here, and uh, that's something I'd like to touch upon. Uh, I think when the question comes up. Uh, but other than that, I think what Jan said, that it's a young community, and that gives us an opportunity to mold it, mold it into a community of not just uh, participating, which is great right away. You know, it, it's great to see so many participants in the community, but also contributors as well. Awesome. Thanks. I, so, you know, while working on these questions, I, I was doing some research and uh, I came across a community maturity model some of the internet by a round, community round table group. And they had a few parameters on which you can really assess the, the maturity levels of community and, uh, uh, you know, provide uh, consultancy and advice as to where all you need to and how, how can you possibly have this matrices. So, uh, some, of those, uh, some of those parameters are in case you know, the guys want to uh, comment upon the community maturity of India from this perspective, uh, strategy, leadership, culture, uh, community management, content and programming, and matrices and metrics. So if anyone wants to uh, check on one of these parameters, I say that again, so strategy, leadership, culture, community management, content and programming, and matrices and measurements. I really like this question out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that young energy guy, exactly. So I do think when you look at those areas again, strategy and leadership and some other things that you said, um, <laughs> when you look at those areas, I see all of those things in the community here for sure. You have leaders all over the place, leadership all over the place, people who are uh, taking it upon themselves to create camps, to mentor people, to host sprints, right? You've got that covered. I think mean, you cover all of those bases. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely an outsider coming in here, but the one theme I think I've heard uh, over and over again is that um, there, there is a challenge in that India is so vast geographically. And so there are lots of communities where you're seeing these qualities emerge, and but what is maybe lacking is a unified place for all of those things to come together and represent India with a capital I as opposed to Bangalore or Hyderabad, right? And I think that will be an interesting place to think about for India, um, because just of like sheer numbers, you guys are going to win the game eventually, right? If Drupal's a game, <laughs> right? Uh, without that, right? But it would be really amazing to see what happened, what would happen if you could um, figure out how to overcome that. Yeah. So uh, uh, I, I like to call it this, you know, that we, the Indian Drupal community, is still in its infancy, but Drupal communities in India are pretty mature. It's like what you said, uh, there is that glue that, that is needed between uh, all the different communities, all the different cities in India, and that has to be strengthened, that has to be molded better. It's, and and, and I, I'm not saying that we're not going in the right direction, we are, but it's still in very, very early stages, and we need a lot of work to make it uh, 
you know, so that we can actually call it an Indian Rupu thing. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Um, this might be a question where the same would like to uh, probably start first, but as I said, it's open plan and anyone can jump in. Uh, where do you really see us on the so-called scale of consumption to contribution as of today? Okay, well, I mean, I can answer in numbers. Uh, so, we know that uh, India is the second largest profit source to Drupal Atovaji. Drupal uh, uh, has the second largest uh, pool of users from India, but we don't have enough, uh, we are not even in the top 10 contributors to Drupal Core or even Contrib Modules. Now, this is only speaking of core contribution, you know, I think if you're talking about uh, non-core contributions, events, prints, and uh, so I, I don't have any metrics to uh, say that we are on so and so please, but I think we are pretty good over there. You know, we are great at organizing events. Uh, uh, Mumbai saw 650 plus at the last camp, Bangalore saw 500 plus, Delhi 500 plus, 550 plus, I think. Um, and uh, Pune 200, I, I might be very wrong with Pune, I don't remember. But yeah, it's, it's a general trend, you know, camps usually attract upwards of 200 people easily. And with the, with the marketing effort, uh, for example, I was involved in Bangalore camp, and we had only about a month of marketing ahead of it. Uh, and this was the first camp, but we were still able to pull off around 500 plus people. So we, we don't, we are pretty good over there. I think, you know, we are able to pull numbers, we are able to attract people to Drupal, and like I said earlier, schools, colleges, universities, it's a definitely a great thing. Contribution is a different story, and we're building up on that. I, and I've personally seen a lot of excitement building up in uh, various organizations. Uh, over these two years in Con, you know, I've had many people come up to me and ask me, you know, how can I get into contributions, or how can I build this culture in my organization. So we're getting there, we're getting there. Anyway, sure. So, so I would say it's um, obviously it's still early days there, but, but, but a couple of facts or a couple of things that things that are happening there. So, Dries mentioned in his keynote that many, many big sites that we all know about being on Drupal, some of the big famous ones, were built in India, right? And many large organisations who have been working with teams uh, with very large teams in India for a very long time. These companies, many of these large companies, are moving to Drupal and building thousands of Drupal sites, right? So they're being built here. But there's a big behavior uh, shift that needs to happen around building these kind of sites. Uh, these large organizations have been outsourcing this, this kind of work, work in India for a long time and working with, uh, with, with people there to build these sites. But you go visit the facilities they're working in, it's, it, it's, it's not uh, building the behaviors uh, that will in, in immediately lead to, okay, I'm going to contribute code. So for example, these, these facilities are built to, to protect uh, code that companies are, are writing, assuming it's proprietary, right? So if I go visit any of these large uh, large facilities and I carry a hard drive there, it'll be, it'll be taken off me before I go in, right? Because they don't want to be taking this code away that's so precious to these companies. So moving from that behavior to, okay, you're going to write this code for the same client, but you're going to upload it to the internet and give it away for free to people, and you're going to contribute to the community, that's a huge leap. So there's a, in terms of the scale, there's a huge amount of work that's going on uh, on here right now, and a huge amount of talent working in the Drupal community. But I think um, one big shift needs to come from these companies empowering the, the people they're working with to, to make the shift. Right. Okay. As you do that, you might see might see this uh, might see you know, India rocketing at the scale actually pretty quickly because the the workforce is there. They're talented. They're already working on these things. They may just uh, in many cases aren't, aren't empowered to do it. Once you empower them to do it, then you talked about uh, when. Uh, when people can and want to do it, how you encourage the behaviors to actually get them to do it as part of the daily job. But there's a huge first step that needs to happen on a fairly broad, broad basis to, to really get the, get the potential there. Okay. All right, that's really what we're doing. Anyone else want to uh, chip in on that question? Thank you so much. Um, so, Drupal has been growing, you know. I think that's an understatement. Drupal has grown. And you know, a million websites, uh, more than two percent of the internet being covered by Drupal, more than twelve percent of the top uh, hundred thousand websites by Drupal. There has been growing adoption across multiple world leaders in, in industries, and uh, it certainly has come along with and established itself. But we still have a, a huge problem globally, which is global talent shortage, right? And 
Now, India's IT talent pool, you know, it's huge, you know, it's, it's, it's ever growing and uh, probably the biggest in, in, in the world of play. Can really address that problem, can really, really leverage this, this opportunity. What, what do you, as, uh, you know, uh, leaders of uh, businesses outside and communities outside and initiatives outside see, what do you see from that side being the challenges that we need to overcome, you know, so-called areas of improvements, in order to uh, uh, leverage this opportunity, how can, how do you think we can really move forward towards becoming a top leader uh, in a couple of months, years, or you know, whatever may be the time, the timeline from that perspective? So, on the thought leadership space, which I think is a little bit different than the talent shortage, but on the thought leadership space, I would actually say there's nothing that the Indian community needs to do. You have plenty of thought leadership. And what really needs to happen is within the project, let's say there's a really strong, it's full of wonderful people, but there's a strong Western bias, right? People who are just really shocked that there was so much contribution, once we could see the numbers, there was so much contribution from, from India. And so I think it's incumbent upon us as the association and the community as a whole to make sure that we continue to bring ourselves here to understand what's happening here, um, how you're innovating here, uh, and that we're making sure that we are, we're making room at the table for the Indian community to participate from you know, being able to highlight case studies on Drupal.org to making sure that you know, you've got leadership roles in the project, right? So now that we can see the contribution from this community more clearly, I think we have work to do to overcome from our own Western bias and make sure that the, the Indian community is, is more included in all those in all those ways. Because you're doing it. I mean, I've heard so many amazing stories here, uh, and uh, we just need to find ways to share them better. And it is, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard, it's, it's, it's along a similar line on the stories I've heard since I've been here. Um, just hearing about the education that's happening and, and taking, taking Drupal into, um, into many places and translating training materials for, people, for many, many people to get access to it, you know, it's very difficult to then, then come here and say, we've got some answers for you as to how you can push this forward, right? I've learned a huge amount of and extremely impressed by the things that are already happening. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been, it's been eye-opening and a, you know, a great experience to learn those things this week. Yeah. Okay. One, one, more thing, actually. One, one thing that you can do, I think, is to, in terms of bringing new people into the community, um, it's, uh, it, like, we need to hear what is helpful for you in terms of getting started. Where do you get stuck in getting started? So we had a conversation yesterday, right, about issue cues and how challenging they are, how to find an issue. And, and he said, there's lots of written words about that, but it's not, it's not actually not helpful for us. And um, everyone, you know, we have lots of competent English speakers, but the thing that really helps is if we can see it too. So could we get a video where we just walk through how the issue cues work and we could see it and hear it at the same time and we would get it, right? So that exists. They, they do, there are some, yep, but they're not super easy to find, right? So. There's stuff, I mean, we just need to hear where those stumbling blocks are. Um, so we need the community to raise their hands and say, it would be better if we could have this, right? And so yes, that we so can bring that up. For instance, I didn't know about this. We had this discussion and it came out. So it is great. Yeah. It's great, that, that's how we know. All right. Uh, over to the next question. Uh, this, is, uh, this is again about you know us being large and number, numbers gain, really. So, uh, I mean, everything in India, and, and Asia, uh, in fact, is large in terms of numbers and sizes, and so is the growing group of community. Uh, now, the question is, for, for uh, such large and growing communities like these, do you guys suggest more people, less contribution per head? I, I know there has been a, a conversation on Google.org uh, on this, uh, uh, this, this, this matter, and there was a long thread, uh, uh, you know, for that. More people, less contributions? Per head, with widespread awareness, because there are so many people, you know, you know, few hundred thousand people doing one batch, maybe, versus consolidated contributions, lesser people, but more focused approach towards solving complex challenges and bigger problems. What do you suggest for Indian community from that planet? 
<laughs> so at a, at, a fair, at a fairly general level, for, for, for contributions to be uh, sustainable, I feel like uh, it needs to be across many, many people, right? So for example, we're talking about the, the Drupal talent shortage, and also talking about the number of people who are, um, who are in India working on Drupal, right? So I think for this to be sustainable, those people who spend their lives or their day job in Drupal, they should be contributing, you know, they can, they can all uh, uh, gain a huge amount from contributing as well. So that's, that's kind of the answer with the, with, the, with the first option in terms of it should be many, many people. Uh, so very, very broad range of people contributing in, in, in some way. I think that, that, that's sustainable and that can add a huge amount of value. I think at the same point for some focused initiatives or some when you're trying to push a particular initiative forward, you do need dedicated people, right? So it's a mix. I don't think it's sustainable to say Drupal's only going to be pushed forward by people who are completely dedicated and all they do is contribute all day. Um, of course, that, that, that's important for, for many things, but I think for this to really be sustainable, um, the, the broad base of Drupal, uh, Drupal development is being developers that are being, being, uh, um, being trained here and, and, and working here, I think they should, they should already be, be able to contribute. Okay. okay. To, to some degree, I'm going to repeat what you said, but there are two broad schools of thought and two ways that we can show have been successful so far, and I think that they're absolutely applicable in India and probably everywhere else. Um, people like Laurie Escola and uh, Tiffany Ferris very, very publicly support getting as many people as possible in and doing what they can, and you know, uh, through mentorship and, and our community's ability to bring new people in and get them excited about making a difference. Um, <clears throat> It's like in uh, any sales-driven company, you bring in 100 junior salespeople without looking too hard at who they are and what they can do, and out of that group, some number will fall off and some number will succeed and some will be rock uh, superstars, and it's quite hard to tell going in who's going to be the superstar. So we need a really solid, if we keep it in business terms, we need a solid pipeline of new talent, and if we keep it in more community terms, we need a really broad base to build our community on. And that, that, that's essential and we'll fail without that. Um, and we'll also produce a lot of other categories of people. Um, the, 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 if you look at uh, uh, Linux, uh, for example, though, or some of the other um, <coughs> open source projects, uh, there are very hard problems. Very hard problems that you need to wrap your head around for a whole day or a whole week or a whole year to fix. Um, be it cash tags in Drupal 8, be it um, some of the other big blockers that we had, and, uh, I'm really, really grateful that companies like Acquia and Chapter 3 and others have stepped up to the plate and hired people just to knuckle down and think about the hard stuff. And um, I, I suspect that we need both. I suspect that we need a growing community and an increasing professionalism in at least core development, if not module development, probably both. Um, so, and, and this is pretty, I mean, India's certainly on the way to doing this very, very well with, the, as we said before, with Drupal in schools and universities. Um, the very large Drupal practices here, whether it be TCS, whether it be your team, whether whoever, um, I, I would love to have some sort of an auditing process or a self, mm, you know, reporting something where contribution becomes more important in day-to-day -day development workflows. Uh, I'm actually working with a guy Working with a guy, working with a guy in Holland who wrote a thesis for his university studies about how uh, contribution in open source companies works and doesn't work, and it's pretty fascinating. And he experimented at his job um, doing a couple of different really simple steps in your absolutely normal commit code test it uh, uh, to, to include contribution in a very, very low friction way, and we're going to be doing some presentations about that as soon as we've got the slides ready this year. So um, that's kind of a third stream, I guess, is work contribution into your daily routine, right? Um, so... Okay, that's, that's really interesting. And, and yeah, in fact, uh, there's, a, there's a takeaway right away that uh, both the, this is one of the community leaders in India, that what we are doing, you know, Organizing these camps, you know, having large number of people, students, developers attend them, you know, pushing them, encouraging them to even start playing the first batch, first contribution. There's nothing wrong about that. Let's keep doing that the way we are. And these would automatically perhaps be able to bigger, larger contributors, you know, as the day they get down from production. Thank you.
Do you have anyone, anyone else want to add to the plug? I was just going to say, it's almost exactly the same pattern for uh, contributing to organizing events like this, right? So when I was here at the camp last year, there was a huge amount of energy that went into organizing, organizing that event. And it was great to see uh, you know, the same discussion about people dedicated to, uh, dedicated to committing code and those people who are doing it part of a daily job. The very same model happened last year. There were people, some on our team, some from some other companies, who through that period were absolutely focused on just organizing organizing the event, supported by a complete team of, um, of other people contributing as volunteers to the event. Right? And they all had an absolute blast. And I hope the same model will happen there, as in you'll find the few, as you, as you, select, as you suggested, who really, really enjoyed it and they want to be able to push to be the, be the person to organize the next camp or be more involved in organizing the next camp as these things are, are growing and it takes, it takes a, lot of, a, lot of, um, a lot of work to, uh, to, get them, to get them going and get them running. So I think it's exactly the same model there for, uh, for these organizations or organizing these events as well as, uh, as, well as the, the straight code contribution. So we've touched upon that a lot this week. I've noticed that as a, a, a thread running through the con, but uh, it behooves us to remember that uh, code and patches are not actually our killer app. What we really are is a group of smart people solving hard problems together. So we need people to do the code. Um, I think we also need the communicators and we need organizers and we need lawyers. And contribution is not only code, right? So, hmm? so please keep that in mind. That, that uh, consider yourself a contributor if you've come to an event, if you've downloaded the stuff, if you use it. There's a lot. There's a lot more than just writing patches. Excellent. That actually that was my second. Uh, the next question, which was uh, code or non-code based contributions. What do you suggest? Um, and uh, <laughs> is the right balance? So thank you, Jan, for you know getting that pre pre premonition. <laughs> Sorry, I ruined your problem. <laughs> yeah, that's why you know we have something else to find on here. Anyone else want to check on that particular question? I haven't asked that yet, though. So, but have you done? What do you mean by right now? Is it for the community? For the community, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, for the community. Okay. Yeah, I think. Um, so as Jim pointed out, there are a lot of ways to get engaged in the Drupal community that aren't about code, and they're really important for the community because the community is not a bunch of code writing robots. Turns out you guys are human, and <laughs> and you need human experiences, right? Uh, you need ways to learn, you need ways to connect, uh, you need ways to walk away from people sometimes and get a little healthy balance. True story, Jim. Right, like those are those are all things that the community needs, and and so finding ways to contribute along those areas is really important to keeping the community healthy. Um, and what I also think is really neat is that <clears throat> we put a lot of emphasis, more emphasis on that here than any other project that I've talked to. Uh, and I haven't experienced every open source community for sure, but um, we put a lot of emphasis on that in in Drupal when we talk about it. Where we fall apart is that we don't do a really good job of tracking that or showing that or recognizing that non-code contribution. So there's a lot more that we can do there that the association wants to help the community suss out and, and show um, among our many, many long list of priorities. Um, so we want to be able to show that more. But I, I also just want to point out that that non-code contribution is really important to you as you know, as humans, but also as professionals, because there's no coder that gets to work all by themselves in a box and never interact with another human, right? And when you come and help run a camp, you understand what it's like now to be on the marketing team, right? And so when you have to work with the marketing team in your company, you they don't seem like foreign animals from another planet, right? I'm like, I get you now, right? <laughs> um, so um, it's a great way to grow your skill set, your own professional skill set, uh, and to be able to come into any your next professional situation as a more well-rounded professional person. So I really encourage people, it can be very uncomfortable to try to step out of your role and take those take those on, but I think it can be really rich and rewarding for you. Yes, uh, I want to say that when you say right balance, uh, what I have seen, what I have experienced myself is that the right balance just builds itself. You know, if you want to organize a camp, you know, there are people who step up to help you. And uh, that, that, that happened in Bangalore. We had a great team. 
and uh, we just had a month, you know, we had it, since it was the first camp, we had a lot of issues getting the venue and everything, but when once that happened, everything rolled along, and of course, we all kind of stepped out of our comfort zones now and then, I still remember the time, one month, again, that was a month I hardly slept, uh, but, but, yeah, like you said, it's, it's a very important experience, you know, you are breaking out of your shell, you're learning more things, and, again, it, it doesn't comment, again, you know, from which kind of, uh, comments on the previous questions as well, uh, the contribution part of things, you know, uh, again, not just uh, code contribution, but non-code contributions as well. Uh, I find, again, this is from my personal experience, I find that contributing helps you learn. Uh, a very, very common uh, idea over here is that, okay, please teach me first. Okay, how should I, uh, please tell me about Drupal 8 and I'll try, try to work on issue here. Yes, yes, exactly. And, and that, and, and that's something which I always try to communicate. You know, you don't need to. Take an issue, you can, whatever issue you think that appeals to you, take it, work on it. If you don't get it, you know, we are here to help you. And that sometimes works, sometimes doesn't work, and we need to get better at it. We need to get better at understanding that uh, it's it's not about that you learn the whole Thing. You don't, that you learn whole Drupal 8, all the classes, all the objects, and then, okay, I'm getting into the issue. It doesn't work like that. I learn Drupal 8 by starting to contribute, and that's the message I want to see get across in all the sprints we have, and all the meetups we have, all the camps we have. All right, so the, the community will find the right balance uh, based on their own dynamics or by themselves, which is all. Sorry, can I give you a mic? Don't forget, documentation is a great way to contribute too. Absolutely, and it's, it's not just you can. The list goes on and on and on, right? So with our with our Drupal projects, often the, the challenges in uh, being successful is not is not the technology. The technology works great, and then when you come to these uh, these events and you see how fast the technology is moving forward, that's great as well. There are so many people who, can, who are contributing to these events with with disciplines around project management, testing, all these things go on and on and on as these, these uh, skills relate directly to Drupal projects. There are loads of people contributing to these as well, creating sessions, building these skills, skills coming to DrupalCon and then sharing that. It just keeps, keeps on, the list keeps on going. You can add that to the same list, right? I could have, could have said, said UX as well. There are also sessions. Um, oh, right, that's a good question. So many ways. Unfortunately, our admin interface is perfect, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing really for you to see here. <laughs> yeah, so have you ever contributed before? No. Are you going to come to the sprints tomorrow? Well, if you come to the sprints tomorrow, right, they'll get you set up. And I think it's a great way to... Um, you know, so just learn how it all works, right? There's a there's a getting started uh, session. They'll get, you, they'll get you started, as advertised. Um, and I want to emphasize that they're called contribution sprints. They're not code sprints. And that's a really important choice that um, Jess uh, over there, Jess XJM, and Kathy Thays and the other sprint mentors who we owe so much to um, in the community that they made because it's not all about code. But you can come and come to the Getting Started Sprint. They'll get you set up. And then the next thing they do is they help you understand what is that like panoply of options? So if UX is my thing, how can I find all the issues related to UX that are in that Drupal issue queue that I can go that I can go contribute to? So yeah, they'll help you do that tomorrow. Can I follow up on that? Yeah. yeah, you can follow up on that. And introduce you to Bolian tomorrow. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's exactly what I'm gonna say. Yeah. Uh-oh. Um, no, no, no. Okay. Um, so, I'd say, so I'd say that usability challenge is actually one of, um, in Drupal core, it's one of our weak areas right now. Um, we're, we, we don't do the best job of, like, when we, even when we know that a usability problem exists, we don't do the best job of actually just fixing it. Um, so if, if you're interested in, 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 in contributing in, to core and in, in user, please don't take photos of me. Um, if, if you want to contribute to usability, I'd actually like to introduce you to, to Bojan Summers, who's here, who's um, one of our usability maintainers. Um, and also, if you haven't met Angie, um, she's a product manager for Drupal 8. Um, they can sort of like 
the like I would come to the, the first time printer workshop will be interesting and valuable for you because you'll you'll learn like some of the tools that de that developers use to contribute patches and you'll learn about how to use the issue and other things like that. That's helpful when you're interacting to have that conversation. But just being thrown in alone like that will maybe be a sad experience for you. So definitely talk talk to Boyan, um, talk to Angie, and like Holly or I can introduce you, um, and it would be really be valuable. Thank you. Excellent. We've got some engagements happening. Also, hey, yeah, give it a uh, also, I'm Gabor. Um, one of the things that you can really help with tomorrow is leading and participating in translation sprints. So if you know English and some other language, like Marathi or Hindi or whatever other language that you happen to know, then um, you can just use the web interface and translate whatever in uh, Drupal. And that would be very beneficial for the rest of the country to be able to use Drupal in uh, native languages. So we are looking for people to lead sprints to their respective language and to participate in that tomorrow. Excellent. So, you know. I'm going to hijack this whole thing. Okay. <laughs> what Gabor and Jess actually just made me realize too about contribution is that um, it, what, you're, what you guys are really saying here is like it's, it's really important to unlock the who's who. It's still really important. As much of a meritocracy as Drupal is, it's important to know if I'm interested in UX, Boyan, right, or Angie, um, you know, Louis Nyman, these are the people I want to know, right? Um, so if there's one thing that you can do to help, it, it, going back to that thought leadership, right? Like, study up on Drupal, and don't be afraid to reach out to the people who are writing about the issues that you're interested in, who are addressing the kinds of issues uh, in the queue that um, that you might want to work on, right? Um, every every issue has someone you know who's assigned to it. And if you see them writing smart things and you're interested in that and you think you can learn, that, that you know, there's a link there. Their name is a link to their Drupal.org profile. And you have an ability to communicate with them, to reach out and say, hey, you're saying something I'm really interested in. I want to learn. Can you, can you work with me? And that is, that's really important. And don't be afraid to do that because the community here is incredibly generous and kind. And it's really important to find those people. Excellent. So, there are so many tips you just got, you know, uh, I hope that really answered your question, but if it still didn't, you know, we have around five or six mini and large size camps on India, and each one of these camps starts with designing the website. Yeah. With. So that's where you can start with contributing from UX, UX, UI design perspective as well. There you go. Now, in the interest of time, I think we only have about seven minutes left. I know last day, last session. And then there's a bar, so many of them. So um, I'd probably skip the next three or four questions and open the floor to this you know, audience questions. Already we have already done that by the time. So, Samla, uh, please, yeah. Can someone give a mic? How do we make the Indian community click? And some differences that always come up to me is that there are a lot more hobbies in the West, culturally, there were uh, more hobbies there. I don't know if there are many organizations here who are ready to put in hobbies and let them continue to just code for Drupal. So these are things that bring like top contributions in the US, like I know many people who are like um, programming and have a passion for programming, continue to remain programmers in the West. Whereas culturally where we are, we tend to move, you're a good programmer for a couple of years, you then move into project management, and then you move into a different cycle. Secondly, there aren't very many organizations who be like ready to put in a hobbyist and say, Hey, don't work for me, just contribute for the community. So, I mean, just some big differences that you see between how we work, 
partially. The second, I mean, I have a list of points and I'm not going to uh, steal this program. Just one more thought that I want to leave at this gathering is that the thought that always comes to me is, should we worry that India is so culturally disparate and see how to unify them? Or should we just localize our community interactions? Because I think sometimes we get pulled into uh, some thing which is very difficult for us to address. Rather focus on driving more local initiatives. So India is like America. So you have different Drupal cons all over the US and I'm sure you experience different kind of communities everywhere. So um, this is a question that um, I'd like to place. I'd like to address the last point. Diversity is incredibly important. And the more different sorts of people you have addressing a problem, the better your solution is going to be. Please do not search for a homogenized, unified culture to attack Drupal with. Please stay who you are and where you're from and speak your language. And uh, um, really, really, in the, in the West, we have a great deal of difficulty in most open source projects uh, getting enough diversity happen and one of the things that I've noticed here is a fabulous diversity of religions, a lot of women here this weekend and I'm, uh, I think please please don't try to fix that because none of that is a problem. And the last thing is that, you know, I mean, um, culturally um, a lot of us are very shy. Many of the best programmers may not have um, ready to share their inhibitions and go on to IRC and post some things. And just putting some of these small observations that I've had, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to have opportunities to see how I can um, work with some of you to help you to um, use these ideas to move Indian contribution to a different level. Okay, so there was a presentation yesterday of Bangalore Drupal community and I was described as being shy and someone who is in this room by the way said that uh, no you're not shy and I guess yeah, it's probably right and uh, if I look back on myself you know uh, what really happened I can say that okay I've probably not been shy I've just been an introvert and that's true for many many programmers and it's only the first time that hurts, really. You just have to figure out how to make that happen. And Sprints are a great, great place for that, and it's just a problem of figuring, it, figuring out how to make it more attractive. And, it, and it's climbing, you know, it's, it's not a very hard problem right now, I would say. It is increasing. More and more people are getting more and more excited about contribution every day. I, I see that happening all over the place. And, uh, what, uh, there's a, some sort of correlation in my mind between successful open source people and communications. Uh, one of my, in fact, my very first boss at Acquia came out of the proprietary software world and he figured that Drupal was going to be something and um, he was running the first engineering team when we were only one engineering team back at Acquia and uh, he started to try to build our first products, uh, Drupal Gardens and get the 7 out the door and the hosting platform came along. And he kept on trying to do things and kept on sort of stopping. And he had to stop and actually figure out what the bike shed is in Drupal, right? And the fact that before we're going to do anything, we're going to explore all the edge cases with you and all the reasons why this might not work. And actually, the entire premise of the question that you asked, let's talk about that first. <laughs> and eventually, Chris Brookins said, I would rather argue with a whole room of courtroom barristers, room lawyers, than with one open source engineer who doesn't want to do what I'm asking. Um, open source people are great communicators, and I've seen a lot of people come out of their shells. I didn't know you had a shell, but apparently you came out of it as well. Um, but the way our community is set up, there are enormous opportunities for communication, also for shy people. Issue queues, IRC, um, Morbus If is an incredible contributor to the project. He's been there, I don't even know how many years, and um, I've never met him in person. I'm not sure if he's ever been to any event 
but he's been incredibly important in the earlier phases of the project. Um, not everyone likes to be on stage and talk about it, but that's cool. Um, but there's this, this really, really multifaceted world of communication that you can hook into. Uh, there, interestingly, uh, Larry Garfield has also proposed the PSR 8 standard, which I believe is a great Drupal contribution to the rest of the open source world. Um, and it's called the Huggable Interface. And it's, it's a way to control the, the, the physical interaction between 12 years because we're also a really huggy, really, really affectionate culture. And I, I find that really, really important. And I think it's cool that he's uh, codifying that in the PSR standard. I don't want to just put it on, uh, you know, I, I don't want to just put it on people to say, well, it's overcome your cultural you know, in inhibition too. I do think there is still, there's a place for us to be able to say, you know, people who are serving in leadership roles in the community say, let's reach out proactively. Like Christine said, sprints are really great and one of the great reasons that they are so great, to me greats in that sentence. One of, the, one of the reasons they're so great is that when you're going to make that first comment on an issue, right, someone's there when you push the submit button because it's actually frightening, right? Yes. And someone's there to be like, it's cool, you're gonna be fine. I do this, I don't hug. It's cool, it's gonna be fine. And, and that's important, and we need ways to replicate that virtually. Um, and we need leaders to reach out and say, hey, I've seen what you've quietly been doing over here. I'd like to bring you into the fold. So um, I'm hoping that we can use some of the contribution uh, statistics that we've been seeing now to help unearth some of those folks who are really amazing contributors but don't always stand up and wave their arms and say, hey, I'm an amazing contributor, right? So that's <laughs> nice, Dave. <laughs> awesome. I think uh, it couldn't be, you know, uh, as appropriate as this to close the session. Uh, I'm sorry we are, we are uh, done with the time. Uh, if you still have any more questions, please grab our panelists, you know, hug them ask those questions and get those uh, resolutions that we're looking for. From a community perspective, I think there have been some very interesting takeaways uh, and learnings, and uh, we have a, a road to plan and go forward. Thank you so much. Let's, let's give a round of applause to our panelists, a brilliant, a brilliant audience, and thank you, Brian, for having this happen. Ha, ha, ha.